Did you know that chronic inflammation contributes to more than 50% of deaths globally? But the question is, what causes it? Can our choice of foods be one of the risk factors? Today's video will answer all that and reveal some shocking everyday food items that cause inflammation. Even though it is common knowledge, let's quickly review what inflammation is. Inflammation is an autoimmune response of your body against tissue damage. Think of it as a defense mechanism of your immune system. Have you ever wondered why a new wound turns red, swells up, goes numb, and radiates heat? It's our body's mechanism of healing, and that's exactly what inflammation is in our body. It's a sign that the immune cells have come to your rescue and initiated the healing process. However, inflammation is not always the harbinger of good news. Sometimes it comes with bad news too. Inflammation can ignite a long list of disorders, such as obesity, cancer, cardiovascular issues, and Alzheimer's, just to name a few. Let us explore these four surprising foods that cause inflammation. Number one, first on our list is vegetable oil. The popularity and consumption of vegetable oils have increased dramatically over the past century. Vegetable oils are often advertised as heart-friendly, edible oils that enhance your cooking. The reasoning given by experts behind this is that the polyunsaturated fat content is much better than saturated fats for our bodies. Some studies have even shown that the consumption of polyunsaturated fats leads to a reduced risk of heart problems. In theory, vegetable oil should be a better cooking option, especially better than butter, which is infamous for its high fat content. But if vegetable oils are so healthy, how did they end up on our list? There are two main reasons. First, researchers are worried about how much of these oils people consume daily. Since too much of anything is bad, we should not overconsume vegetable oils. The amount of oil you need each day is different for everyone. The average adult needs about 2,000 calories per day. In a 2,000 calorie diet, women can have 5 to 6 teaspoons of oil a day and men can have 6 to 7 teaspoons. Another reason is that some vegetable oils have imbalanced ratios of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids in their respective compositions, which can harm your body. You may wonder if most of the fatty acids are essential for your body's basic functioning. What is wrong if a good supply of fatty acids are coming your way? Well, studies suggest that an exceptional ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids in vegetable oils for an average person should be one to one. But most of the vegetable oils we use in Western diets have a ratio of 20 to 1. Research says that this high omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acid ratio can be a significant cause of chronic inflammation, which puts you at an increased risk of diseases such as cancer, diabetes, arthritis, and cardiovascular issues. Did you notice the irony of how vegetable oil, which was so heart-friendly in the beginning, flipped sides and turned bad? Yes. That is why we need to pay attention to what we eat and how much we eat. Consuming vegetable oils in moderation can help you in reaping their actual benefits. Also, not all plant oils harm your health. You can pick from extra virgin coconut and extra virgin olive oil, which are excellent choices for addition to meals and do not pose much threat to your body. Number two, next on our list is cereal. Do you prefer a cereal bowl for your breakfast? Watch out closely, you might be at risk at chronic inflammation. Do you check ingredient labels before buying your breakfast cereals? If not, then what we're about to tell you might just shock you. You should avoid cereal if you do not want to give an unhealthy kickstart to your day. While starting a day with a bowl of cornflakes or granola might seem harmless, it's not as innocent as it looks. Cereals often contain added sugars, one of the primary culprits that cause inflammation. Studies have shown links between increased sugar intake and higher inflammatory markers. In the United States, fortification programs ensure an adequate nutrient balance in cereals, so health authorities usually advise including a substantial part of them in your regular diets. But cereals often contain wheat, one of the most consumed cereal grains worldwide, comprising a few anti-nutrients such as wheat gluten and wheat lectin, which are responsible for inducing inflammation. 
In the long term, this can lead to organ dysfunctions and might develop into severe disorders. So the next time you go grocery shopping, make sure to check the labels and if possible, avoid cereal altogether. You can substitute it with grain-free cereal and find the one with no added sugar. Number three, third on our list are artificial sweeteners. Sugary treats are undoubtedly the most desired foods, but their damaging effect on our bodies is equally enormous. This is why most of us who wish to lead a healthy life cut down on sugar consumption and try to make a switch to sugar-free food items. We often trade our usual Coke with sugar-free Diet Coke or use an artificial sweetener in our coffees instead of topping them with actual sugar. This way, you enjoy the sweetness without actually having to eat sugar. Everything seems to be perfect, isn't it? But here's the twist. The sugar-free claim might seem enticing, but should not be taken at face value. These sugar-free products contain aspartame, an artificial sweetener used in place of sugar. Although it might successfully cut down your sugar intake, it increases your risk of chronic inflammation. Studies have shown that despite being flagged as safe to consume by the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, aspartame is known to influence inflammation pathways, which might lead to chronic inflammation in the long run. This makes this odorless white and non-nutritive powder controversial in the scientific community. Some studies suggest that relying on aspartame for a long time might trigger many inflammatory diseases, such as cancer, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, Alzheimer's, and multiple sclerosis. Those who are on medications for schizophrenia, a neurodegenerative disorder that hampers one's ability to process things, should avoid using aspartame and consult their doctors for alternative options. Number four, and lastly, we have flavored sparkling water on our list. You may have swapped sparkling water for sports drinks and sodas in the hope of upscaling efforts to meet your hydration goals, but it turns out that it wasn't as good of an idea as you assumed it to be. Even though flavored water is a better alternative to harmful sodas, it still contains added sugars, artificial sweeteners, and other additives, which have significant risk factors that cause chronic inflammation. Studies have shown that increased sugar consumption enhances your inflammatory responses, and you will likely experience low-grade inflammation, leading to cardiovascular problems and other comorbidities. Research also suggests that they significantly enhance the production of inflammatory markers that amplify the issue to a greater extent. Even if some product companies skip the sugar, they add aspartame to their product as an artificial sweetener and the risks still remain. Studies have shown that aspartame can trigger chronic inflammation and if consumed in large quantities, it could adversely affect your health. Some studies claim sparkling water can be a bit harsh on your tummy and may cause minor side effects like bloating, stomach pain, excessive burping, and gas problems. This is often blamed on the carbonated content of the drink. However, there is little evidence in support of that claim, and it's been said that only a consumption exceeding 300 milliliters of this carbonated fluid might be able to impact your gastric health. But having said that, you don't have much to worry about sparkling water as they are still good alternatives that ease your transition from sugary drinks to simple water and keep you hydrated. Inflammation is a part of your body's natural healing process and is extremely normal, but the real concern arises when we eat too many inflammatory foods, which triggers low-grade chronic inflammation. If we keep feeding our bodies such foods, this can cause irreversible damage and lead to severe health repercussions. So please make an informed decision when adding these foods to your diet. Want to know more about health issues? Subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comments below.